What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Giselle and I'm an ultrasound technologist, aka sonographer out here in Las Vegas that loves all things Disney. And today we're going to be talking about a very, very interesting topic, which I think everyone should really listen to if you are going into the ultrasound field or if you're going to be a sonographer in the future, if you're thinking about it, especially for those of you who are going into clinicals or those of you who are new grad sonographers. This video, this is something that I came up with when I was just laying in bed thinking about what is something that I wish someone told me about. And this is exactly what my channel is for. It's for those of you who are going into the ultrasound field, who are currently in the ultrasound field, or are thinking about, you know, is this career for me? And this is something that I wish someone told me a long time ago. After doing ultrasound for about six years now, I'm quite comfortable with the fact that not everything's going to be perfect and we do make mistakes. We are human beings and I want you guys to know first, it's okay to mess up. Now, when I say mess up, certain things, it's okay to mess up. And these are things that are very common mistakes that I think people make as students, sonographers. I am going to tell you guys about five mistakes that I have made as a sonographer, whether it be I was a student or as an ultrasound technologist already, a new grad, even right now. These are mistakes that I have made in the past and these are mistakes that I have grown from, learned from, and I think you guys are gonna be very interested in these mistakes that I have made so that you go into the field knowing that these things are possible, that you're probably gonna make these mistakes and I don't want you to beat yourself up for them because I beat myself up for them quite often and I know that so many sonographers beat themselves up, especially new grads. And even though I'm going to tell you all these right now, and when it does happen, it's easier said than done because I know as sonographers, we care a lot about our exams. We care a lot about what we do. So it's very important to know that you're not alone and it's all right that these things happen, but let's just do our best to prevent them from happening and do our best to try not to make these mistakes. Grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's just get right into it. So first off, I wanna start off with our job is very crucial to the medical field. We help the doctors out, we help them in the process of their diagnosis for these patients. So whether it be outpatient, inpatient, the ER setting, at a clinical site, in a doctor's office, vascular lab, no matter where you're doing your ultrasound, it's very, technologist dependent. So it's up to me, it's up to you to find these things, to be very detailed oriented, to know what you're looking at, to know your anatomy, to know your protocol, to know all of these things. So I'm going to start off with that. Our job is very unique. We do a lot, we know a lot, and yet not a lot of people know about what we actually really do. So that's kind of the cool thing about ultrasound, but at the same time, don't you just wish that everybody knew the things that we go through, but that's why we're in this cool secret special sonographers club because no one really truly knows what we go through as sonographers unless you are one. And the things that go through our minds and the things that we deal with every single day, the types of patients, our exams are hard already on itself, but then you have the patient who is probably giving you a hard time as well, or the doctor giving you a hard time, the nurse giving you a hard time. So we do work under a high stress environment and we do work under pressure. We have a doctor that's going to be asking us all these questions, right? They read our exams. We honestly have to be able to tell them what we see and what we're looking at and what we're describing. So a lot of our mistakes come from us being under that pressure and the amount of people you see, the amount of scans we had to do. You get tired, your brain gets I don't know, foggy, it gets in shock from some of the things that you have to see. But a lot of times that's where we are our strongest because we can go from one exam to another exam and be able to continue on with our exams and our scans and our day and describe what we see. And for those of you who understand what I'm saying, you know how hard it is and you know how difficult it truly is 
So I give you props already for going into this field or being a sonographer because it is a tough, tough job. So this is why we want to make sure we tell everyone, students, when we are bringing people into this field, we need you guys to know that these mistakes are things that we are learning from, we are growing from, and we've all done it, we've all been there before, we've all done this. It's gonna take a long time for a new student, a new grad to feel comfortable with the mistakes that they make and they will learn from it. And I will start with the very first mistake on my list. Our duty is to prevent all of these mistakes, but sometimes it happens, right? And the very first mistake, which is a very, very big one, okay? This is a big mistake and it's mispathology. What do I mean by mispathology? You miss something and you don't see it because why? We are the eyes of the doctor. This is an inevitable mistake. I don't know how many times someone will say, I'm afraid to go into this field because I'm afraid of missing something and basically preventing the doctor from seeing it. I mean, every day, that is something that you are going to have to face in this job. You may miss something. And I don't wanna say that's okay, but also that's okay. First of all, the reason why I wanna say it's okay is because there are other modalities, not just ultrasound. And you learn, you learn this throughout time. But you will also hear your preceptors, you will hear your coworkers. They will say it's okay because we cannot see it all. That's the hard grappling, is grappling a word? Gripping, I don't know. That's just the hard thing to understand as a sonographer that we cannot see it all. And so when I say that, when you look, for example, something that is very, very just tough to be able to find, breast cancer. Someone can get mad at a sonographer for maybe not seeing that cancer on a breast ultrasound, but as a sonographer, we are looking at basically a needle in a haystack. And unless you have a mammogram, so a mammography, that's where they come in. They are the gold standard. Ultrasound helps in aiding the diagnosis of the patient. Don't beat yourself up if you can't see something on an ultrasound or if you miss pathology because there are other steps, there are other ways. There is CAT scan, MRI, X-ray, nuclear medicine, mammography. And so when I say miss pathology, there's also things like a cyst that you may have missed that CT saw. And sometimes there is like a mass, for example, on the liver, but then they say it's like two centimeters in the dome and this patient is 300 pounds and there's gas everywhere. Ultrasound cannot see everything. So that's my first point. We try really, really hard as sonographers and I would hope that you as a sonographer are doing this exam and trying to figure out what's going on because that person is someone's mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, that could be somebody that you know. And I want you to know that you did your best to find whatever is going on in that patient's exam. Now, if you do a pelvic ultrasound and you're sweeping through and you don't see anything, and then the next time they come in, someone else scans them and then they are sweeping through and then they find, let's say an ectopic pregnancy. Well, you can't beat yourself up for it because you didn't see it, but sometimes maybe it was too early or maybe the gas in that patient the first time when you scanned them was really bad and then the second time they came back, the next person could see them. Or maybe the second person pushed a little bit harder than you did. There are so many factors when it comes to ultrasound that will be part of your reason why you miss pathology. And that is why I say 
it as a mistake because we will look at it as a mistake. We will look at missing pathology as a mistake. Well, the thing is there are other modalities. People have follow-ups for a reason. And this is a learning opportunity for you to grow from, to make sure you are assessing every organ, every part of whatever you're looking at as thorough as you can. But like I said, ultrasound cannot see everything. There are limitations to ultrasound. And with time, you will learn that, especially for you new grads and new students out there. So yeah, number one mistake, you may miss pathology. So take your time, ask your preceptors, ask your coworkers, and comment down below if you have any stories with missing pathology because I have done it before. I have missed things and while it's very hard in the beginning, it's a learning process with every single scan. You learn something and you learn something new. So. If that is something that you're struggling with, comment down below or join our Discord so we can talk about it because it's better to be able to learn from the mistake of missing something and just know that it will happen more than once in your career. If you never miss pathology, you are a super sonographer. But I guarantee that everyone's gone through it and everyone's missed at least one thing. We don't see everything and that's something that ultrasound technologists should be able to understand. It could take a few years. Once you get into that mindset, then you'll understand. Make sure you're doing the best that you can, assessing, sweeping, looking all around and making sure that you're getting everything that you can under that ultrasound. Doing the little tips and tricks, pushing down to push the gas out of the way, making sure you're doing all your sweeps, thoroughly assessing. But if you keep looking at something over and over and over again, and you just can't see it. We say this in ultrasound, sometimes you just can't see it. So that's number one. Number two, this one kind of follows that one almost because while you can miss pathology, the second thing is you can make something normal look absolutely abnormal. So with that being said, we already know that ultrasound can't see everything, doesn't diagnose everything, isn't the gold standard for a lot of different things. But because it has no radiation and it's the way that we manipulate the probe to see whatever we're looking at, sometimes you as a sonographer can make something completely normal look abnormal. And this is something I guarantee you will do your first day of scanning. You may think something looks weird, but really it's normal. And your preceptor, your teacher, coworker, they'll look at it and they'll be like, that looks normal to me. So where can we learn from these mistakes? These are the skills that you need to know, how to scan, how to manipulate your probe, the angles, make sure you know your anatomy, because sometimes things that are normal can look abnormal but they're actually normal. One of the things that I think is very common with this kind of mistake are kidneys and gallbladders. Sometimes you can manipulate them where they look abnormal, but really they're normal. So let's say gallbladder, right? How many times have you, okay, I'm talking to sonographers here now. How many times have you got in a scan where somebody else, somewhere else, said something about that scan was abnormal. And then you get the patient and it was normal. I've gotten that quite a few times actually. People saying that someone's gallbladder was abnormal, that there were stones or sludge and there was nothing in there when I saw it. CAT scan said negative but they were transferred over from a different hospital that didn't want to do a CAT scan, different things like that. Sometimes people call an appendix and really it's not an appendix and it's actually just bowel. Sometimes people will call blood clots, but really there is no blood clots and they just didn't know how to see the vein in a certain way, or maybe they angled the probe a little bit weirdly. Whatever it is, whatever the mistake is, we sometimes 
will call something normal actually abnormal. And this is why we have radiologists read our exams. We are the ones that are performing the exams, but we have the radiologists look at the exams, they question us, and that's why it's so hard to do this job sometimes because they will ask you, what did you see? And you can have a conversation with a radiologist, depends how nice your radiologist is, but this is something that you will do. You will make something normal look abnormal, and that's okay. We have our technologist worksheets, or we have, for some places I worked, you just type the abnormal things that you see. And sometimes the doctors don't agree with you. And that's why I say that's okay. You can say whatever you wanna say. You are the one that is looking at the images. You are taking these images live in real time. If your radiologist or doctor has a question, they will ask you. And this is like how I said on the first one. We have follow-ups. The patients come back to get things checked out. But this is a mistake that people make. Watch your angles, describe what you see, and use CINI, CINI loop. That's where you just kind of like whoop, whoop, sweep through, and that'll help you and help the radiologist decide is something normal or something abnormal. And let the doctor decide at the end of the day because you're not a doctor, you are just a sonographer. They're gonna ask you for what you see and what you think, but at the end of the day, they're gonna sign the paperwork and say whatever they say. Number three. Aren't these mistakes fun? <laughs> no, just kidding. They're not fun. But these are things that I am just smiling about because I have done all these things and this is something that I've learned over time. And for you guys, you're just starting out. You're probably just like, oh my gosh. And at this point, you're gonna go through this, but I'm just sharing my experiences so that you know what's gonna happen and you have something to think about when you're out there in the field. So the third thing we're gonna talk about is you may forget an image or something from your protocol. So this goes to all my people out there who maybe work two different jobs. Protocols are typically very similar all over the United States, but every place has like their own protocol for some reason. And each sonographer has their own protocol for some reason or the way that they scan. And you know why? It's because you all went to different schools and you all got taught by different sonographers. And so what is the result of that? Everyone's gonna have a different protocol. Everyone's gonna start in a certain way and every place is gonna have a different protocol. Some places have protocol books, some places don't. Some places want you to do a Doppler over the main portal and vein, some places don't. Some places are accredited and some places are not. So these are the things that you need to think about wherever you work, wherever you go, make sure you know and understand your protocols. Now, if you forget an image from a protocol, the radiologist will probably ask you to one, bring the patient back if you're in an outpatient place. Two, if you're in a hospital, they may ask you to go back and rescan the patient or get the patient back for more additional images. This mistake, forgetting an image on a protocol, is easily, easily able to be avoided by just understanding your protocol taking the time to do your exam, making sure before you let the patient go that you are double checking everything, that you had everything, that you got all the images. And I have done this before where I've even looked back and I thought I got everything, but like sometimes I'll forget the CBD or something. Or one time I forgot to Doppler the main portal vein because we do that at our hospital. If you make a mistake like that, you just, do whatever the radiologist says. If they ask you to call the patient back, if you if they ask you to rescan the patient, you just say, okay, I will go get the patient and I will rescan it. Or if they come back, I'll we'll, you know, rescan it, things like that. It's just a mistake that I think once you do it once, you hopefully will not do it again. And that's the whole growth and the learning process of making these mistakes but really, really know your protocols, especially if you have to hop from place to place because every place has a different protocol. While they're all very similar and we all get taught pretty much the same things in school, you don't know what that specific place of work is gonna ask from you. So definitely just know your protocols, learn from your mistakes, don't make the same mistake twice, okay? Trust me.
but it's okay. I mean, I've, I forgot things multiple times, so. And I'm, I've still been employed, so. Okay, <laughs> next mistake. Oh, before I move on to my next mistake, I looked at my notes here, and the one thing that I wrote was better to take more images and delete later on than having less images or forget something. Yeah, sometimes, for example, when I started out, I used to do abdomen images, probably like a hundred, over a hundred images. And one of our more senior techs, he does like 60 images for a normal abdomen. And, you know, I guess with time, you realize you don't need the 60 plus more images when you have your protocol down and you know what you're looking at and if it's normal, et cetera, et cetera. So just know that it's better to take more images than it is to take less and forget and then you have to call the patient back. But just make sure you're looking and you're making sure you have everything in your protocol for your doctor. The next mistake, number four, would probably be incorrect information on your tech worksheet or technologist worksheet. So as ultrasound technologists or sonographers, what we do is something very interesting and different than other modalities. And what we have to do is write a tech worksheet, which basically is describe what we see. And some places want you to completely blatantly state that you see a cyst. They're like, I need you to tell me if there's a cyst. So I would just write right kidney cyst measuring blah, 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 right? And then other places want you to describe what you see or describe the cyst, but not say cyst. So you would say simple anechoic circular structure, avascular, whatever. You describe what you see. Sometimes on these tech worksheets, you might mess up, you might forget something, you might describe it incompletely or wrongly according to the radiologist or doctor. And a lot of times they will call you and ask you or they'll just ignore you and say whatever they want to say on their paperwork or on their dictation. So this mistake, while I feel like it's something that we probably do because we're trying to go fast and we just are typing things and trying to figure out what to say, what you really need to know is that with each patient, make sure you know what you're writing about what you saw on the correct patient, on the images that you saw. So what I have seen people do are after their exam, they'll write down all the abnormal pathology that they've seen and just write it down on like their paperwork or in a notebook or however you write your notes down at your place of work. But just knowing what you saw and understanding what you saw and taking your time, not going so fast, and it's kind of hard to in the circumstances that we're in right now because everywhere's so busy. You're piled with 12, 15, 20 patients and you don't have time to write those tech worksheets. And then everyone starts jumbling in together in your brain and you're like, oh my gosh. And then you write something on one patient and it should have been like on another or something. Any mistake that has to do with the tech worksheet, it happens quite often. Like that's a mistake you're gonna probably be making for the rest of your career. Maybe not every day, but maybe once in a blue moon, we're hoping, right? Like I said in the beginning, we're humans, we're not robots. We have hard days, we're tired, stressed, lots of pressure. And so these mistakes are inevitable. But just know that if you do make a mistake, if the radiologist calls you, if the doctor talks to you, don't let it get to your head. You already know that you were having a hard day or that it was so busy or stress was just piling up and you made one mistake on a worksheet. Well, you got all your images and the doctor should be able to see what you saw and write down what they think. But a lot of times these radiologists go off what we say. So just know that you have a lot of power in and, and voice in this field to, to tell them what you see because you are the expert. You are the one who is looking at what's happening. And half the time they just order like a CAT scan or an MRI. You'll learn fast that they do a lot of ultrasounds but they still do CAT scans and even vice versa. They'll order a lot of CAT scans but they'll still order ultrasound and you still have to describe things. So just know that if that happens and you accidentally do something wrong on your tech worksheet, it's fine. You fix it, you move on from it. And that's pretty much the end of that one. 
The fifth and final mistake that I have made, and I have only made this mistake one time, and I learned from it and I've never done it again. But the fifth and final mistake that I've made as a sonographer that you might make, and you may make this mistake one time in your career, who knows? You may not ever, if you listen to this mistake that I have made and just make sure you double, triple, quadruple check what you're doing is scan the wrong patient somehow or scan the wrong or the right patient on the wrong patient on your machine. I just would like to clearly state that I have never scanned the wrong patient, but I do know people who have scanned the wrong patient and I know other modalities who have scanned the wrong x-ray on the wrong patient or did the wrong CT on the wrong patient. Okay, I, I know other modalities and other people who have done that, but I have never done the wrong patient. Okay, I've always had the correct patient. So that mistake yet to have due. But the one mistake that I have done was, and I remember it vividly, because like I said, you learn and you grow from your mistakes and then your best bet is please do not ever make that mistake ever again. But what I did was scan the correct patient, but I clicked on the machine because you know how you can like click on the machine and put your patient imaging on the machine. Like I clicked somebody else's name on the machine. So that part was very difficult for me because I didn't know how to fix that. I was pretty brand new. And at the time I was like, yo, I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't know what do I, what do, I do because I already knew I was getting the right patient. I had the correct requisition with the correct patient name, but on the machine, maybe I was going too fast. I don't know. Some, maybe I double clicked on the wrong one or I thought it was, who knows? Whatever the mistake was, I made a mistake. And so for that time, I basically told the patient because after I realized what I had done, first instinct I had on my mind was, oh crap, okay, so I gotta do something like right now before I leave this patient's room. Cause at least I caught it before I left the patient's room. But I had basically told them that I had to take more images and I deleted all the images on the other patient, you know, on the machine. And then I opened up the correct patient on the machine and then redid their whole scan on there. The reason why I say that is because on our hospital machines, the patient name is on the images. And so when I took the original pictures of that patient on the machine the first time around, it was another person's name, like another person's information. So I had to completely delete all of those because that's totally wrong. And then I had to redo the exam basically on their correct name. But that is one mistake that I've done and one mistake only, and I learned from it, I grew from it, but that is something that you might encounter. You may scan the wrong patient or you may scan the wrong patient in the wrong jacket or exam on the machine. And every place has a different way to, to like fix it. I think at the time I was just really scared and I didn't know what to do, so I just, fixed it right then and there. I imagine if I went down and I didn't know, I mean, I probably would have figured it out because of our PAC system and then the name would have been a different person than the person that I had scanned, right? I've heard of other places where people have done this. Their PAC system, they're able to like transfer it or they're able to like, I don't know how they like cross out the names and then fix it in certain ways. So if this has happened to you or if you've had this happen to you before, comment down below. Um, but just know that there are other PAC systems that can fix that because I've, I've seen other people go through this issue at other places. But that was the one time I ever made that mistake. So what did we learn from my mistake? We double, triple check, make sure on the machine it's the correct patient's name, a session number, birth date, everything like that. And then on the patient, you check their wristband, you ask them to tell you their name and their birthday, which are two patient identifiers. If they're a ventilated patient or someone who can't speak or something like that, you always make sure that you are scanning the correct and the right patient so that you don't make that mistake. And uh, yeah, learning lesson that I gladly have only done one time in my six years of doing this. So make sure you check everything.
and it's a really big hassle if you make this kind of mistake so i hope that you don't make this mistake even though i know you might make all the other mistakes one through four Number five, please just make sure you're taking the right patient, the right images, the right exam, and then you'll completely avoid this mistake. Okay guys, so this video is much longer than I ever anticipated it to be. I had the five bullet points and I had the five mistakes that I think you might make and that I have already made. And I thought it would be quicker and faster, but I just felt like I was just like talking to a friend who's about to like, go into the world of ultrasound and I, I just want to make sure you don't make these mistakes and I want to make sure that you learn from these mistakes if you do make these mistakes because I mean how many people have been told wear your helmet when you ride a bike but they still don't wear the helmet and then they fall or how many times has someone told you to not roll at a stop sign but you probably rolled at a stop sign so I'm just saying you might make these mistakes and these are mistakes that I've made. They're mistakes that people are going to continually make. But at the end of the day, if you know that this is something that you are gonna go through, learn from it, grow from it, don't beat yourself up for it, give yourself grace, make sure you have your coworker, buddy that you can lean on or join our Discord channel to talk about the mistakes because we are humans first. We are stenographers, yes, but at the end of the day, we are humans, we have feelings, and we go through a lot. This is a very stressful job, and I just want you guys to know that it's okay to feel the way that you're feeling when you make these mistakes. I have had radiologists yell at me. I have had radiologists yell at other stenographers. I have seen the frustration that this can bring up and the frustration that these mistakes can make. So as long as you know, you ask your questions, you make sure you're not doing this, you be the best sonographer that you can be, just know that it'll be okay at the end of the day. With repetition, with practice, with time, scanning will become easier, talking to your patients will be easier, and getting through your days will be much easier. It's gonna be a hard job, not gonna lie. Me here being six plus years and other sonographers who've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years, it's a long road and journey ahead, but you can do it. And like I said, if you make any of these mistakes, don't beat yourself up. If you made any other mistakes or if there's something that I have missed out that you think is more common that people make mistakes um, in this field, go ahead and comment down below. I hope you guys share this with your students, your friends, coworkers, teachers, anybody that wants to hear the five mistakes that I've made in the past, okay? I learned from them. We're growing from them and we're being better sonographers every single day. But I appreciate you guys for listening. This is a very long video. I'm so sorry, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys took notes and I hope you guys have a great day, night, evening, week. Stay safe out there. Be kind to one another and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.